Hi investors, this is a, a video about uh, my portfolio performance for 2013. It's a little late, we are at the end of February 2014 already, uh, but um, yeah, um, my performance for 2013 was amazing, 278% uh, return, um, that means that's not a doubling of my capital. That's not a tripling, but that is um, uh, more than a tripling. It's almost quadrupling my capital. Um, I am very proud of that. Um, I'm very happy with that. I feel and am a lot richer. Um, and um, it gives me a, a lot of possibilities I did not have before. Um, it's also a real, um, really important for me that I achieved that because I've been struggling for a, a long time to make investing profitable. I started um, investing in 2005-2006. Of course, uh, as a teenager, I have invested also in the dot-com bubble in 2000 where I lost all my savings. Uh, but... Um, um, I started to invest with decent money in 2005-2006 um, and um, I invested in gold and silver at the time and even though I was correct I didn't invest enough and uh, in 2008 um, there was a strong correction of silver and I sold out for cheap um, I did not uh, buy extra um, I made several other mistakes. I started, but actually my performance in 2008 was pretty good. I only lost 10%, which was really good compared to most investors. That motivated me to start a blog, um, markdemezel.be, uh, and also uh, the European Permanent Portfolio.blogspot.com. Uh, and today um, you can find my work on uh, markdemezel.blogspot.com. Just put Mark de Maisel in on the internet in, and you will find my YouTube channel. But you will also find my blog, where you see um, uh, my um, uh, a link, uh, a page that is called my portfolio, where you can see my portfolio returns in detail. I started publishing them since 2008, my first year, a loss of 10%. And after that, I, starting 2009, I wrote a lot of articles on that blog, but I also shared my portfolio in detail um, as I have done up until today sometimes I do not update it for many months but um, actually mostly it takes a few months uh, before I update it um, but those that have followed attentively my portfolio have been able to copy most of my returns those returns being an average of a staggering 30% since 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13, that's 6 years, my average return has been 30%. That is better than the best investors in the world. That's an amazing accomplishment, but of course it's thanks to 2013 where I did have an enormously high return. For all the previous years I had some good years, mostly I, 2008 was the worst uh, but all the others were positive and um, um, uh, but still my average return was only 6% uh, for the first 5 years so basically I did not make any money because I estimate true inflation to be 5% uh, minimum hmm? uh, I think true I think that it is actually more but okay that is up for discussion uh, I think that it is 7-8% but I take 5% because I'm really certain about that. So if I have an average return of 6% per year, that is really not good enough. I can't live from that. My capital is not growing in purchasing power. Um, I had only 6%, uh, which was okay, but it was certainly not enough considering how much I have actually foreseen the banking crisis in 2008, how the mistakes I have not made. Um, I, I did not go into commodities. 
uh, before 2008. I did not. Uh, I I only bought uh, gold and silver, um, even though commodities were a hype. I did not not go into real estate, even though I did have real estate, but I did liquidate it in 2011. It took me some years, but I did not have a crash with it because it was in Belgium, Europe, and um, um, actually it continued to go up also after 2008. Um, and um, but yeah, the biggest mistake I have made is that. Um, I foresaw uh, the banking crisis, but I invested um, uh, a lot in silver. And when silver then lost 50% of its value in 2008, I got discouraged and I stopped believing in my qualities as an investor. And um, basically when it had recovered silver, I liquidated almost everything and switched to a permanent portfolio in 2009, um, 10, 11. Um, exactly the years where silver and gold uh, doubled tripled in value but i barely had any huh? i did not have enough at all so that's why i only had six percent on average per year and then i realized that uh, by missing such a big opportunity that uh, the permanent portfolio uh, also had his disadvantages uh, you are protected very well against uh, losses but you also cannot make true gains that are above an inflation of 5-6%. Uh, that is impossible with the permanent portfolio to achieve. So, um, no venture, no gain um, is um, what I believe in today. Meaning you must risk something in order to win. Huh? It is impossible to hedge against everything and at the same time make money. Uh, no, what you have to do is indeed um, place your bets and uh, weigh your risks, calculate risk reward ratios and invest a lot more in those things that have favorable risk reward ratios and a lot less in things that have unfavorable risk reward ratios. Um, all these things I learned as I went and indeed I took a position into bit. Uh, I decided that I wanted to risk half of my capital in a variable portfolio. Uh, I decided to do that in 2011, um, right at the time when I also had liquidated my real estate. And I went uh, for 50% into gold, gold mining stocks. That was absolutely the wrong timing because they peaked out in 2011 and right at the peak, I raised my allocation from around 20% to 50%. So I took also a huge loss on that. Uh, in uh, the last part of 2011 and in 2012 and in 2013, it went down three years in a row. Um, so I lost a lot on that. Luckily, I continued to invest in other uh, interesting um um, uh, investments and um, Bitcoin was a real success. I started investing in that in uh, at the end of 2012. I allocated initially 5% of my capital to it um, and then raised it quickly to 10%. And then um, in 2013 it hundred folded. Hence why I succeeded in uh, making such an enormous uh, gain of 278 percent in 2013 um, but thanks to such an enormous gain my average return has gone up from not six percent but now 30 percent per year since 2008 included um, so yeah um, i am very proud of that very likely my average return should go down considering it is very rare that someone has such a, a, a high return but i think that actually i will uh, go up um, even more um, but of course uh, that's uh, the future shall uh, show um, for this year, uh, 2014, we are at the end of February, I have a loss of minus 
Um, Bitcoin has gone down by minus 15% since the start of the year. I originally had allocated 60% to Bitcoin when this year started, but um, I have invested in Next uh, half of almost half of my Bitcoins. Next is a new cryptocurrency that is only three months old. Um, or let's say six months since it started being discussed on the Bitcoin Talk Forum. Um, um, and uh, with my next currently, I have a gain of around six to eight um, percent. Um, so, um, but I also invested in um, uh, actually a lot in, uh, in Roland van Damme, his portfolio uh, at the end of last year, at the end of 2013. I locked in profits from Bitcoin. I think I have sold at uh, at the middle of 2013 when Bitcoin had gone up from $10 to uh, uh, 266 and corrected back to 50 and then um, actually um, uh, were around 100 for a long time, many months. Um, I have uh, sold uh, about half of my Bitcoins to lock in profits and uh, um, I did sell also uh, another 10, 20, 20% 20 of my Bitcoins when it went from 100 to $1,000. Um, also, that was around $1,000 and I sold around 20%. So basically, I was able to, um, to um, uh, take out a lot of profits and uh, invest them, uh, diversify them for just in case that Bitcoin would go to zero. I still need to have a decent returns. So... Um, I decided to invest almost all of that into the Roland van Damme portfolio that consists mostly of gold, physical gold, some physical silver and gold mining stocks. He has uh, waited uh, since 2011 to invest in gold mining stocks. He is a really good uh, investor. Um, he has his faults, that's for sure. Um, he is not able um, to, um, not able very well to um to um, well, who am I to criticize him? His average return is uh, even. 2013 was a really bad year for him. He lost 20%. Um, I did the same because I have been following his portfolio since 2011. Uh, but um, but um, um, yeah, and I find it a pity that he did not discuss that. Uh, it's just one sentence that he said that was his loss and he prefers not to talk about it. I don't think that is uh, wise. Um, that being said, his average return, even with that year included, uh, since 2000 is still around 13% per year. Uh, and that is double as good as true inflation. So he makes real profit. And that is a very rare in the world of investing. Um, for example, Huge Andre, who is a great speaker, who had an enormously high return in 2008 of 30%, 30 uh, still has only an average return since the inception of his fund of 6-7%. Huh? Uh, just to illustrate, um, it is very, very, very few investors have more than 7% on average per year. So, um, um, he's still above that. Uh, and... Uh, what I find really uh, very well done of him is that um, he has outperformed gold uh, since 2000, uh, even though he is invested mostly in gold. His other positions that are sometimes turbos uh, some, uh, and currently are mostly gold mining stocks, have he has succeeded to outperform gold and uh, has a higher performance than gold. Hmm? And he can be considered a gold bug. Uh, very few investors succeed in that. So I still trust him. Um, and um, uh, I have um, actually tenfolded uh, my uh, capital allocation to the Roland van Damme portfolio. Um, it was um, at the end of last year around, um, I don't know why I had, but um, actually in the middle of 2013, it was very low. Uh, I, at one point, I had totally removed his portfolio. But um, by the end of 2013, I had um, around 10, 20% of my capital in it. Today, I have around 30% of my capital in it. Um, 
and um, um, I also doubled uh, his allocation to gold mining stocks. He has bought a lot of gold mining stocks uh, at the end of uh, 2013 uh, and at the start of this year 2014. But still, uh, his gold mining stocks are only about 25% of his portfolio. So I doubled that. So actually, I do copy his portfolio to the letter, except that I double his allocation to gold mining stocks, meaning that for me, 50% of the portfolio is gold mining stocks. They have gone up very well since uh, 1st of January. So in only two months, uh, this portfolio is up around 16%. Um, so that's another position I have and uh, then of course I have a small permanent portfolio it's getting smaller and smaller because I am uh, getting out of that um, slowly but steadily uh, I want all my capital to be allocated to good risk reward investments and permanent portfolio is not that it is just a preserver of capital um, and it does that job very well um, so um, the permanent portfolio, my permanent portfolio is up also 4% this year. So the total is a loss of minus 2% only, uh, even though uh, Bitcoin went down with 15%. And even though I had 60% allocated to Bitcoin, I barely have any loss. Bitcoin price currently is $580. Um, so if it would be higher by the time you watch that video, my performance will likely be higher too, and vice versa. Um, what more can I say about my portfolio? Of course, Next uh, is a big position now. It's around uh, almost as big as Bitcoin um, and as big as my gold and gold mining stocks. Um, uh, so each is all about 30% in my portfolio. Um, but I'm going to make a separate video about next why I think it's really a, a great investment. Um, I'm going to say a little bit more about gold and gold mining stocks. Although, um, yeah. Uh, so gold and gold mining stocks of Roland Van Damme. Um, I am very bullish on this. Um, of course, I'm much more bullish on Bitcoin. And next, uh, considering Bitcoin has a market cap of 7 billion uh, and will uh, easily go to um, 70 billion uh, this year. Uh, and I believe that because it is really, really impressive how many people know about Bitcoin these days. Uh, this amount has uh, gone up enormously in one year. Huh? One year ago, that means at the start of 2013, at the end of 2012, almost nobody knew about Bitcoin. Today, almost everybody knows about Bitcoin, to put it bluntly. I'm exaggerating a bit here, but that's to show that it is really uh, remarkable. Um, uh, almost everybody, actually, in the financial world, everybody knows Bitcoin. And that's very important because the market cap of 7 billion is absolutely nothing compared to the amount of people that know it and the amount of purchasing power that they have combined. I'm talking about individuals uh, mostly, but also the financial industry, hedge funds. Um, uh, so um, this thing, it is just... I think it's the surest bet one can take uh, is that. That means not 100% certainty, but I think 90% certain that that thing will go up drastically. Um, and quickly also. Um, as mentioned in the other video, if Western governments decide to illegalize it, I withdraw this comment, uh, but uh, you can just follow the media and see if that is happening because if you follow the media, you see uh, the actions taken and those are not that Bitcoin is illegalized. So as long as this is not the case, you can buy, hold and uh, become a lot richer. Um, but of course, I want to diversify. There is this small chance that Bitcoin fails. So I have um, uh, and of course, next is connected to Bitcoin. If Bitcoin fails, next likely will fail too. And so um, um, I uh, have invested considerably in gold and gold mining stocks. 
today. Why? Because, um, well, uh, I have doubt it's very, very hard to do that at the end of 2013 because I think in the long term, uh, gold uh, uh, and uh, gold mining stocks as well will go down in uh, purchasing power uh, compared to its value today. Um, because I think something like Bitcoin will end up replacing fiat and gold uh, in importance. But this will take years, many, many years. Uh, and so uh, in the short term, I think that um, chances are good enough uh, for gold to go up. Uh, it has corrected from around $1,900 to around $1,300. And uh, it never achieved um, the high uh, valuations it uh, got in uh, the 70s, at the end of the 70s. Uh, the same for silver. Even actually, silver reached $50 at the end of the 70s. Uh, today, it also, or in 2011, it also reached $50. But $50 in 2011 is something very different than $50 in 1980 because that's a 30 years difference counting true inflation around five six seven percent means that uh, $50 in 1980 today is around uh, 200 300 dollars okay. it's the same purchasing power so silver <laughs> did not even come close um, uh, and the gold is the same story where it reached was it how what was it again i think seven eight hundred dollars nine hundred maybe uh in nineteen eighty uh maybe seven hundred eight hundred yeah and now it was thousand nine hundred it should be five thousand dollars to have a comparable high valuation huh? there are no guarantees uh gold and silver may not go to such highs again uh but um you must uh, calculate your probabilities and um probably it will go to similar high valuations uh, not only if you compare it to, to fiat but also if you compare it to real estate um, real estate um, um, yeah i have uh, charts on my website but basically compared to real estate it did not uh, go to comparable valuations than it achieved in the 70s and certainly certainly not uh, to valuations that gold achieved in the great depression in the 30s and i think that uh, i still believe that 2008 uh, and what has happened since is a uh, comparable not to the 70s but to the great depression in the 30s uh, because um it's all about debt liquidation and um, that was not the 70s, that was the 30s. Um, uh, debts were way too high uh, for the private and the public sector. Uh, and uh, people were defaulting on their debts. And the debt, um, debt um, pile of debt was shrinking. Uh, this is what's happening today still. Um, um, so, um, and it took, um, yeah... It took, um, uh, well, from in the Great Depression in the 30s, was from 29, uh, and the bottom was reached in 33, four years after it started. Um, the crash, and um, the question is, when do you count starting? Do you count uh, 2008 as the start of the Great Depression? Or do you start counting in 2000 as the start of the Great Depression? I'm not sure about that. Um, but for gold and gold mining stocks, even if gold is in a bear market since 2011 and will continue to go down long term, I think that a rebound is likely because it has been gone down three years in a row. And it has never happened that it went down four years in a row, at least never since the 70s. Eh? Um, uh, so it is possible, but it is unlikely. So um, even if you, uh, I think that a rebound, not to the all-time high of $1,900, but to $1,500, $1,600 is very likely. Eh? And if we get a final leg, lack up in gold then uh, it will actually go uh, beyond the thousand nine hundred to five thousand 
uh, dollars so I think it is wise uh, that I have boosted my uh, allocation to about 30% of my capital and I will take out um, uh, a good chunk uh, when we reach uh, $1,600 because that may be uh, uh, the cat um, the debt debt cat bounce as they call it eh? even a uh, uh, in a bear market uh, an asset will uh, after a, a serious drop go up a bit eh? uh, that's pretty sure um, but I will also hold on to a decent big chunk also just in case we get the final big leg up for gold and gold mining stocks and I am able to fivefold tenfold that capital eh? Um, also, I have doubled my, actually half is only physical, the other half is gold mining stocks uh, and uh, there are the gold mining stocks selected by Roland van Damme. Um, some of them have gone up even in the 90s when uh, gold was in a bear market. Uh, so I think that even if we get a bear market, I think some of these stocks may perform very well because they are... Um, because even in a bear market of, of precious metals or commodities, some companies are able to grow their business very well. So um, that's why I also prefer that. Also, historically, gold mining stocks have become extremely cheap, uh, actually historically cheap compared to gold. At the end of 2013, now it has rebounded. So it's not that bullish anymore. But on the other hand, Whereas you only had fundamental indicators at the end of 2013 that showed that it was really underpriced. Currently you also have a lot of technical indicators thanks to the recent rise that say that this is a buy. So I think this is the best um, tip I can give uh, is to do that uh, for 2014. Uh, go uh, Bitcoin. Um, it has hundredfolded in 2013. It may become the first year that is negative, but I think it is unlikely again, because um, uh, Bitcoin is, uh, is is not to be compared uh, with uh, general stock market, general gold market, general bond markets, general real estate market, because actually it's much more to be compared with a startup company. Huh? And um, uh, uh, and the, the the way that grows is much different. The way that goes up is much different than um, the general big markets. Uh, general big markets, um, they um, uh, even if they are in a really in a bull market, they will have serious corrections after a few years of strong rises, as gold just showed. Huh? Um, um, and um, uh, and uh, uh, but not with startup companies. Uh, startup companies that hit um, uh, the jackpot, uh, they uh, go up every year uh, and they become really big multinationals. Uh, and they do not have um, um, temporary corrections. Uh, uh, I'm thinking about Facebook, Google. Um, and so many other examples, Microsoft, um, Apple. Apple actually is an exception there because they had a really bad uh, period also when Steve Jobs was kicked out in the 90s. But um, uh, therefore, I think um, um, the adoption is um, exponential of Bitcoin. And, uh, and the word gets out more and more. One he, one believe, starts believing in it, and he uh, he convinces another five to ten people. So it is actually exponential, uh, and um, the same for the price. Eh? The more people that come, the more people that value it, and the price just follows adoption. Um, and so um, I think that uh, it is much more likely that Bitcoin will continue its rise in 2014, albeit much less strong than we had in 2013, because that was the best year since Bitcoin started trading in 2009, was it, or 10, on Mongox. Um, so, um, of course, if I say Mongox, I must say something about them. Um, yeah, it's a really sad ending. Uh, uh, they lost 750,000 uh, bitcoins. 
Um, it may be, I think it's possible that they recover it, but it may, it's also possible that they lost it. I think it's due to a technical error uh, that they made, not due to theft, though it could as well be theft too, I really don't uh, know. But uh, true is that they do uh, not have access to their 750,000 bitcoins, and if they lost the private key, the bitcoins are lost too. Um, at first this will be, well, we saw the price correction, but basically, but um, this is um, um, uh, uh, very sad for Mongox and their customers, but it is um, very, very bullish for uh, Bitcoin, of course, because uh, suddenly uh, people that thought they owned 750,000 Bitcoins uh, do not own them, so they will have to buy them again in the market. Um, if somebody stole that pile, uh, he will very likely have sold out uh, most of them by now. Uh, if he really stole them over many years, uh, then he he won't own them today. Also, most of them have been sold already. So basically, what is being added is a, a big pile of purchasing power of people that lost their coins and they want to, of course, have coins again, most of them. Uh, so uh, So that will push the price likely up from here. Um, um, so, um, 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 so my portfolio performance, um, uh, has been really good. Um, concerning the permanent portfolio, I am, um, I'm playing a bit. Um, I really like Mark Faber, his reports, uh, <laughs> the stock market has gone up since 2009, five years. Uh, in a row, if I'm correct, um, the last year, 2013, was unbelievable. Um, all, basically, uh, while while gold mining stocks were tanking, the general stock market, the big indexes, the S&P 500, the Russell 2000, uh, and also in the eurozone, they went up by 20-30%. Um, very likely this is due to central banking uh, buying stocks these days. Yes, it's getting worse and worse. Um, and um, and um, um, all indicators or many indicators are saying that uh, the stock market is due for a correction, a small one or a big one. Uh, a small one would be between 10 and 20 percent and a big one would be something, of course, comparable to um, uh, 2008, maybe less, 30 percent. 40%. This is into the cards, so I'm lowering my uh, portfolio, uh, allez, permanent portfolio, my stocks. I'm selling down to only 20% instead of 25%. My bonds also long-term bonds to 20% instead of 25%. Uh, my gold, since it's just corrected strongly, I do take 30% instead of 25%. And my cash, I also take 30% instead of 25%. Um, but I play within the margins. I still think that uh, the permanent portfolio is not about uh, gaining purchasing power, but about keeping it. So I'm not doing overdoing it neither. Um, so I think that's it. Um, thanks so much uh, for watching and I wish you all uh, a very good luck in 2014. Uh, do note, I will likely stop publishing uh, um, just the returns of general indexes, but I will continue to update my portfolio. Uh, so just look at my portfolio page on, uh, on, uh, on my blog and uh, you can follow the performance there. Thanks and bye.